Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mike. So what I wanted to do for you guys today is my 2018 year in review. I've been watching some videos of people doing their thing, and I was thinking to myself, well, shit, I don't, I don't think I really have a whole bunch. So I started looking, I started digging and going through the boxes, checking out the shell, checking out the wall. I'm like, it's, it's a pretty decent haul. I did pretty well this year. I'm pretty excited. So. I'm going to share that with you in a few minutes, but first I want to say to everyone out there, everyone in the YouTube community, comic book community, Instagram community, the Facebook community, thank you so much for supporting this past weekend's auction, the, the Heroes Initiative auction. Uh, like a shit ton of money has been raised and uh, it all goes to, you know, the proceeds all go to, you know, our heroes and our writers and our artists and our creators. Because, you know, once they're, uh, once they're retired and they're not doing anything, you know, all of this um, health insurance, I'm assuming, you know, comes out of their pocket. Like they have to pay, you know, like buy Cobra, Cobra insurance. And, and that's, that stuff's expensive. So this is a fantastic fund and uh, it was a great, great cause. And uh, it was a crazy, like, 12 hours of, of nonstop action. I watched the majority of it. I was fortunate enough to be able to sell a book on there. I didn't think it was going to sell. Uh, I just got the information today just so I can go ship it out, get the address of the person who won it. And uh, it was just awesome. It was great. It was a great, 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 can I say it again? Great time. So that's that. There's part three of that video on the, of that auction coming up this Saturday. So that's how many books that they, um, that Edwin and uh, the great legend were able to obtain from from donors like you know me and you and, and him and her. So check that out because that's going to be the. Uh, there's still some good stuff. Still some really good stuff. But anyways, let me get into quickly. You know some of the things that I've been able to get. I got a lot of autographs this year. Um, I got a lot of slabs. I got some, you know, some key ASM books, which I'm very excited to show. So let me start off with um, some of the autographs. You know, most of them have been on the wall. You can see I got a couple, couple holes over here. I've taken down this one here. You know, damn it. You know, it really pisses me off because I speak to this guy probably, you know, daily slash weekly. And um, I don't think I did a video to support this, and I feel a little bad. But this one's going out to mix, Mr. Rigamortis. Uh, Riggy, he was at a con, I want to say it was San Francisco con, and uh, he was able to obtain a couple autographs from me, and uh, I, I couldn't be happier. Now, these are all made out personally to me, so they're very uh, you know, cherished, and they'll be treasured. But, um,. I'm going to start off with this one here. I, Salem's Daughter, The Haunting. It's a Xenoscope book, number four. And uh, here it is right here. But it's signed by the gorgeous Natalie Sanders. And what did she write on there? Um, let's see if I can turn it for you guys so you can see it. It says, Stay Awesome, Murph. You know, so perfect. Thanks, Riggy, on that one. And uh, this one here is just awesome, too. I'm not sure who's on the cover. Obviously, I know it's Wolverine. But I'm not sure of the girl. Psylocke, maybe. I I don't know. But uh, to Mike from Larry Hama. Wolverine, number 57. Again, in these gorgeous paint pens. Fantastic. They pop. If you don't have a paint pen and you're getting autographs, you're into this shit. You know, Sharpie. Sharpie markers. They serve their purpose. They're just fine. There's nothing wrong with them. But if you can score yourself a nice gold paint pen, that's the one you want to do. You want to go with paint pens. They're a little tricky. You got to get used to them. You know, but they're uh, they're awesome. And then this one here, again, in a Sharpie paint pen, but in the green, and it pops. It's just awesome. This is the Pulse, number four. This is signed... Uh, to Mike from Mike Mayhew with the Goblin cover. Look how awesome that green is right there. Fantastic. So, Riggy, again, thank you so much for that, brother. Um, Erod212 sent me these. This is um, Javier Garcon or Garon. 
And I, the, the number of the issue escapes me right now. It's like 797, 98, 99, something like that. The Young Guns. And uh, signed right there on the pumpkin. And then this one's pretty badass. This is Adam Kubert. This is Wolverine Weapon X Variant Edition. And uh, again, yeah, that's not a Sharpie. That is that is the paint pen right there. It's just a little bolder, a little brighter, a little cooler, a little more fun. This uh, this year at a con, I was able to meet Greg Horn. And uh, you know, again, it's a year in review, so you've probably seen some of these, but it's cool to see him again. Uh, so Greg Horn on this Electra number eight. I got a couple of them over there too. I didn't take them down. Six is over there. Uh, number four, right here, Greg Horn. And number one on the Marvel Knights run. Very cool. Happy to have that. Uh, the community is always looking out for each other. And um, and the mayor, Jeff Johnson, uh, was able to obtain this for me. Uh, this is ASM number one. And uh, this one here is signed by Nick Spencer. How cool is that? And there it is right there. Certificate of Authenticity. Nick Spencer. Very cool. Jeff, I appreciate that. One of the cooler books that I got done, I've already had um, Eric Larson and Randy Emblin on it, but I, I was able to meet David Michelini. That guy has done so much stuff, but he is Mr. Venom. You know, basically, that, that's that's what he is. You know, he's also did Taskmaster and a whole bunch of other shit, but he's Mr. Venom to me. So I already had, you know, Randy and, uh, and Larson, but right there on the skull, is uh, David Michelini. Uh, E-Rod was able to help me out with uh, New York Comic Con and uh, ASM 538. Sick Clayton Crane cover. Beautiful. And one of the cooler books I got, just because of its content and... Uh, this one's signed by Billy Tucci and Paul Mounts in, again, a Sharpie paint pen. I debated whether or not to put this on the front cover or the back cover, but I went with the front anyways. And um, the uh, what, I, what I had said was just, just don't sign it on Jesus' face. All right, so this is a child is born. And they're all like, oh, God, no, we would never do that. So there's Billy Tucci and Paul Mounts on that. So it's fitting for now. You know, it's Christmas time. Like legend says, you can't have Christmas without Christ. And uh, and there it is right there. So this is a really good story. Um, you know, it's taken right out of the Bible. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a dumbed down, broken down version for, you know, like schmucks like me to understand. But it's a good way to get into it. So if you haven't, this is dirt cheap. If you, if you haven't found one of these copies at your LCS... Pick one up on eBay. I mean, you're gonna pay max like three dollars, and then probably like you know five bucks or eight bucks. You know, pick it up, check it out. It's a great story. Um, but one of the cooler pieces that I was able to do um, at this con, and uh, I had uh, what do I have here? Superman number forty-seven, the wedding album. Okay, and. It's, a, it's an embossed cover. So I went over to uh, Brett Breeding, and I was like, hey, you think you can color in, you know, the S, the Superman S? And he's like, I'll give it a shot. You know, he said it's kind of glossy. It may not hold. And it held pretty well. He did a really good job. But uh, let me show you that. So, so he colored in the S of this issue right here. Came out really cool. I ended up smudging it um, way up here. Just, it just transferred up. But um, what I was able to do was I was able to get Jer uh, Roger Stern, Jerry Ordway, David Michelini, Joe Rubenstein, Barry Kitson, Bob McLeod, Ron Frentz, Brett Breeding, Jose Garcia Lopez to sign all these. So this is everyone that's worked on this book that was at that convention. Um, guys that I would like to get eventually would be George Perez, uh, Dan Jurgens. And uh, Louis Simonson. So 
That would be pretty cool to get that on there. I would ask Neil Adams, uh, even though he really didn't work on the book at all, but he is pretty iconic with Superman. But I ain't paying 50 bucks for Neil. I'm just not. But it would look sweet. So this is now the Red Wedding um, Superman book that I got. What else can we go with? Let's go. Let's just change gears. So I'm just going to grab this pile right here. I'm going to go with Raw's still. You know, not that these books here are anything special, but they're beautiful Dave Dorman uh, covers. They're books that were super hot at one point in time. And um, when Marvel um, kind of threw away the dark horse for Star Wars and saying it's not canon anymore, you know, the price is just tanked. So it was a perfect time for me to jump in. I was going to buy the whole set, so a set of six, but he didn't have, LCS didn't have four and five. They just had one, two, three, and six. So I just stuck with one, two, and three. But this is Star Wars The Dark Reign. Uh, beautiful Dave Dorman autograph. Um, not autographs. I do have this autograph, but uh, just covers. And maybe they'll get autographed again someday. So there's one, two, and three. Something that just came out last week. I guess it can fit into you know what we're doing here. This is X-23 number seven. Holy shit. Like, what is going on with the Archangel? Thank you for letting me know about this. I actually picked this up on Thursday on my LCS. I didn't go on, on Wednesday. And I was like, well, there it is. He had three copies left. Plus, like, six or seven of the regular copies. And I just went and I grabbed this, not thinking that it was going to be so crazy right now. And I haven't been able to get back. So I don't know if he has any more. I doubt he has any more. But uh, I'm off Wednesday, and I'll go and I'll check it out. Um, this is a book, that uh, a cover, really, that I've always wanted. Now, the reason I've picked up some George Perez stuff is because he will be at East Coast Comic Con. And I am so considering going to this convention in, like, what, March or April it is. And Perez is going to be there. Um I just think it would be awesome to meet the man. So this is one of his more iconic covers. You know, not really the expensive or anything like that. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what the price is. But uh, this is in good shape. This is um, Crisis on Infinite Earths number seven. And uh, the death of Supergirl right there. It's just iconic. I think it would look awesome signed by Wolfman and Perez. And, uh, you know, give it a shot. We'll see. So, yes, East Coast Comic Con, I might come up and invade. We'll see how that goes. Um, what do we got going here? Do -do, do -do, do -do. Let's go with this one here. Um, I've been on the Great Legends live auction um, routinely now for a couple months, six months, a year, whatever it's been. And, uh, you know, the Big Bear's on there as well. And this is a book that I've... I've always wanted, and the prices were just crazy at times. And you know, <coughs> excuse me, I'd rather buy from from you folks versus on eBay. So this is a book uh, that I've been, it was on my list. Uh, it's got a few, a few minor, like very very minor flaws, and uh, I think it's you know something that Erod can handle for me, no problem. Make it a little bit better. And then I'll send this off to get graded. But uh, here it is. This is DC Comics Presents number 47. Um, the first appearance of Masters of the Universe in comics. So I've got the Star number one. And I have Marvel number one as well. And I have an image number one too of He-Man as well. So beautiful, beautiful pickup on that one. This one here, this is a late edition. This is a graphic novel. It's huge. It's awesome. I'm not going to open it up, but um, it's a Fireside? Fireside? Yeah, I think it's Fireside uh, Productions. And there's a few of these big books that came out in the 70s. There are hardcover. This one's not. This is a soft cover. Um, but there are hardcover books out there that are huge money, like three, four, five hundred dollars if you can find them. This is a soft cover. This one came out at uh, 19... 
gosh, I didn't write it down, 1976. And uh, it's called Bring on the Bad Guys. It's by Stan Lee's. And uh, let me just show you right there. It's just awesome. And it's in really, really nice shape. I would say this is a, uh, a fine, find a very fine copy of this book. Uh, it's just got all stories of, of everyone that's on here. It's got a nice, nice story about, about them in there. So bring on the bad guys. Happy to find this. Now this type of book, I mean, this thing can go for 100 to 150 or as low as 30 sometimes. So it all depends on the day on, on eBay. But uh, I'm happy to have this. It's really cool. This is all John Romita stuff, too, so, you know, maybe John Romita will sign that. That would be pretty cool, but he doesn't do cons, but I got a Romita autograph this year. Um, I, I did a big chunk of uh, lower ASMs. Do I have them all in here? I don't have them all in here, do I? I do. I'm not going to show that one. I don't need to show that one. But, um... Thanks to Davis Comic Finds, I was able to obtain ASM number 38. This is the last Steve Ditko issue. It's in decent shape. You know, it's probably a three and a half to a four. Because it's got some, got some funkiness going on over there. And again, thanks to Davis Comic Finds, I was able to get ASM number 46. The first appearance of Sharker. Really good looking book. Um, the only flaw that Erod can probably take care of, I hope, um, is it looks like somebody traced Spider Man. So there's an indent kind of going around him. But I'm happy. It just presents awesome and it'll be really cool in the collection. A couple of the bigger books that I've been trying to f obtain this year. Um, ASM 12 is the one that's my Achilles heel, and it's a, just a gorgeous Doc Ock Peter cover, and it's yellow, and they come out shitty sometimes. And the, the ones that I can afford are just kind of like all beat up, but I didn't get it this year. Yeah. I had a chance, and then I decided to do something else with that because I had sold some books, and I had the money, and um, you know, I had asked Davis's opinion, I asked Erod's opinion, I asked AG Surface's opinion. They all were like, yeah, 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 it's pretty good, it's good, it's good. I ended up doing something else um, for the family for Christmas, and you know, so that 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 went out the door. But 2019, that book will 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 come in. But um, let's go back to 2018. Um, this one I'm very excited to get. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man is my is my lowest number. I believe it is. Yeah, I believe it is. ASM number seven. I want to say it's the second appearance of the Vulture. It's got that sexy date stamp right there. It's in really nice shape, you know, for what it is. It's got some creases up there. You can see all that. Um, but the binding, binding is smooth. Very nice. I'm happy with the price I paid for that. When I say I paid like 140, 150 on that, I'm not 100 percent sure. I don't remember. I can go back and I'll, I'll check it out. But very happy to have the ASM number seven, um, a book that's been on my top ten list for forever. I finally knocked it off, and uh, I got a nice presentable copy. It's not the best shape. It's probably a Three and a half to a four and a half, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, there's some pressable defects, but not like it's going to make any major difference. It'll just make it look better. So I will get this pressed out eventually. And uh, ASM number 50. So uh, Spider-Man No More, first appearance of the Kingpin. And uh, let's see if I can get a better shot. I'm not going to take it out, but... Um, you know, it's got some stuff going on, like on Spidey's back there. You know, obviously none of that stuff is going to get pressed out. But it's just some general waviness that, you know, I know Erod can help it help it a lot. Um, but happy to have that book. Very nice. And uh, who knows, maybe Ramita will sign that someday.
ASM number 50. I told you I got some ASMs this year. Uh, ASM 59. Sick, clean copy of this one. Um, again, you know, of course, every book can use a press. Um, but easily a 7-0, in my opinion, on this book. Easily. So this is the first cover appearance of, of this hot chick right here, Mary Jane. Very happy to have that one. Easily. Oh, God, yeah. It's a beautiful book. What else? Well, let's just go with this here. Let's go mention, I mentioned Jeff Johnson earlier. So, you know, I was watching the New York Warriors auction. And uh, I got this one here. Um, at the time, I didn't have a Frank Cho autograph. But I do now. I know I get two, but I, this is the only one on a Spidey book. So it's Frank Cho on ASM 799, the whole Red Goblin thing. It comes with Frank Cho's uh, Certificate of Authenticity. So that's beautiful. That's cool. I'm happy with that. I like it. Um, I'm done with J. Scott Campbell now. Like, I'm just done. Like, the guy just does way too much. And uh, a lot of his shit just kind of just blends. Just looks, you know, change the color of the hair. And you got Gwen. You got Mary Jane. You have Psylocke. You know, you can have Storm. Just, you know, Rogue. Whatever. Um, so I'm done with J. Scott. I still love his work. I love his older stuff. But these came when they came out. I hope I bought a bunch of them. I bought the whole set. And I bought the whole set signed. The ASM 800s. Um, these are the only two that I have left. Because I don't recall him doing the Goblin. The Green Goblin. Um, I'm sure he has. I, I don't know. But, you know, this one. Because it wasn't a chick. But, you know, it just, it just looked awesome. So I got the Green Goblin. You know, signed by Campbell right there. Just looks great. I'm happy with that one. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's got the certificate in the back. But this one here, um, because it just the, the significance of the two together, this is why I kept it. It's, it's the Gwen Stacy one right there. And, uh, you know, the, you got the bridge. And, obviously, we all know that the goblin killed Gwen. So, very cool. And, yes, in my opinion... Gwen is still dead. He's, she's not a spider ghost or whatever. Excuse me. All right, last two on the raw, and then we'll go into some slabs. And uh, this is probably what should finish the um, the video because they're the most significant. But um, I was able to obtain a holy grail for me. And uh, probably for a lot of amazing Spider-Man collectors. And, uh, you know, the price wasn't cheap, but it was a good price. And it was, you know, purchased through a fellow YouTuber. And I was able to do time payments. So time payments helped and made it a little bit easier. I think maybe with all, it was all said and done within a month. Or even less, maybe. So that I bought this off Erod 212 off uh, the beginning of the year. And um, these, these next two books... And I'm going to start off with this one right here. This one was kind of a throw-in-ish almost. I paid for it, but um, this is ASM number 64. A nice Ramita cover right there. And a, just a gorgeous, clean, high-grade book. Just, just beautiful. Um, let's get a little note here. Uh, this is, he wanted 65 for it. I told him to go fuck himself. I wasn't doing that. <laughs> and uh yeah so i was able to combo that and um and get my grail for the year super super excited he already pressed it it is what it is um we're thinking you know anywhere from a one to a two more likely i'm hoping for a 1.8 on this and uh this is amazing spider-man number 14 um, the first appearance of the Green Goblin, so very, very excited to have that. Yeah, it's got its, it's got its issues, um, but the spine, <sighs> the spine is gorgeous. You know, for a book, this book came out in nineteen sixty-five. The spine is gorgeous. It presents 
So awesome. It's got, you know, right there by Hulk. It's got a little bit of thing. And it's a, it's a decent sized chunk in the back that is uh, missing. That's why that breaks it down so low. But what a beautiful book. I am so excited for that. Excuse me. All right, so let's get on to some slabs that I was able to do. And uh, no particular order. Just going to start them from here. Uh, some are autographs. Some are blue labels. This one here is just because I love Al Milgram as a kid growing up. And... Um, I had a chance to buy this. I bought it on eBay. I paid $30, I think, with shipping. This is a 9.6. This is an old school CGC book. It's just a sick ass cover. Um, Jim Mooney art, Al Milgram. Uh, so it's Peter Parker, number 85. It's just awesome. It's just an awesome. You got Black Cat, Spidey. You got three guys on the cover. Hobby. It's a 9.6. It's old school. So. If I get a chance again to see uh, Al Milgram, I'm going to crack that open. Um, whew, this is a gorgeous, it's a stunner. So this is Batman number 50. Yeah, you know, we all got excited. Oh, Batman's getting married. He's getting married. No, he didn't get married. But um, so, so many people did variant covers for it. Uh, sent this off to New York Comic Con. I had Natalie Sanders sign this. Came back as a 9.8. And uh, it's just, just awesome. It's awesome. So I got that. My other New York Comic Con. This one. Wow. This is this one's coming out of the box. Panties are coming off. Um, New York Comic Con with Erod. Uh, ASM five sixty nine. The variant. This one's signed in Murfinator Red, that Sharpie paint pen by Adi Granoff. Right there. And so I got a 9.8. Look at that. I got that awesome signature in red at the bottom. You know, a lot of the times people, you know, people see it's right over the forehead. It's over here on his mouth. And I put it in a spot where I thought it was best. It was subtle. It's there. You can see it, but... You're looking at the artwork for the most part, not the autograph, but when you want to see it, it's right there. So, huge, huge addition to my collection. I'll look awesome up on the shelf. I actually got to make another shelf for some Spidey books. Um, shout out to Archangel, who was uh, able to sell me this book. He had a little Thanksgiving special going on. So I got Batman the Killing Joke. Uh... No number. It's a one shot. I just noticed on the banner it says number, you know, hashtag NN, no number. Came out in 1988 and uh, it's 9.8. So, one of the best Batman stories ever told. Check that out. All right. Happy to have a 9.8 in there. Um, all right. Some signature series. Uh, earlier this year, uh, Erod, not Erod, excuse me, AG Surfers contacted me. It's like, hey, there's an opportunity for a John Romita signature. And I'm like, yeah, man, totally. Like, just just send me the information, tell me how much. So I sent off to, uh, it's, it's a company called New York Comics. You follow them on Instagram. I sent off my copy of 121 and 122 of Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, 5.5. That's like my wheelhouse when it comes to um, earlier bronze and silver age type books. So, 5.5. When did this book come out anyways? 1973. So, it's just... I'm just a little bit older than that. Actually, it came out in June of 73. So, this thing's 45 years old. I'm 46. I had Ramita sign it right there on Spidey's leg. Looks awesome. And then this one as well, the 122. And uh, this came out the next month. I just noticed that. Wow. This is the death of the Green Goblin. And I got John Renee signed there. And uh, 
yes, it is a 5.5. So very cool. They're like, they're like bookends now. So 5.5 is all around. A few more slabs that I want to go through. It shouldn't be, shouldn't take too long. I mean, I'm already at a half an hour, but hey, it's a year end review. Uh, a couple books that I just had myself that I got slabbed. Um, ASM 300, newsstand edition. Got that slab. Got a 9.4. S totally stoked about that one. Again, New York Comic Con. No, 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 no. Not New York Comic Con. This is probably East Coast from last, from 2018. Yes, uh, March. So this one was done by Erod for me as well. And it's ASM um, 361, signed by Mark Bagley right there. And I came back at an awesome 85. Like I had mentioned earlier, I saw, uh, I met Greg Horn. And I got this awesome variant edition for ASM number one, or 822, or 802. And uh, got that signed right up here. Got the... Got the Murfinator Red, Greg Horn. Beautiful looking book. Happy to have that. 9.8. These next couple books, one, two. Yeah, these next two books are going to be, again, examples of paint pens and how awesome that they are. This one, um, I was at Mohegan Sun Comic Con, and I got this one signed by Ron Friends, Brett Breeding, and Roger Stern. ASM 252 came back at a 9.2, and I used the Aqua paint pen to have these signed. And just look what they do. Look, look how they they pop like that, and they match. They match the shading on Spidey and this guy's kid's coat. Roger Stern, Brett Breeding, Ron Friends. So very awesome, very cool. 9.2. This one thing, you know, the grade's not the highest, but it's a totally iconic cover. It's a tri sig again. This is Captain America Annual 8 number. Uh, excuse me, number 8 and 8.0. There's a lot of 8s going on here. Got it signed by Beatty, Zach, and Rubenstein. So you got Zach, Beatty, and then Rubenstein going right down there. Very cool. Looks awesome. It's an 8.0. Out of nowhere, um, maybe it was for my birthday. I think that's what it said, happy birthday. But this is a gift from Archangel. And uh, very cool to have this. It's a 9.8. It's an ASM um, 797. This is a Gabrielle um, Del Otto cover. It is not autographed, but it can be at some point if I ever see it on that. So blue label, gorgeous looking 9.8. Looks awesome. I appreciate it, Arc. Thank you. A new guy on the uh, YouTube community. He's been doing some uh, some auctions here and there, and uh, big lion cat, big cat lion, big lion cat. He's just he's he's fun. He's got this little doll stuffy, and he hits and he goes meow. Um, but this one here, I was able to get off his uh, auction, and uh, it's Uncanny X Men one forty five. This is uh, Dave Co Cochran cover, and um, I believe it's Chris Claremont story. So, maybe at some time I can get at least Rubenstein on it. Obviously, I can't get Cochran and uh, Chris Claremont on it, but it's a 9.6, 145. That awesome Dr. Doom cover with Storm. Very cool to have that. It's just gorgeous. And a couple more to go. Recently purchased off of Big E's auction. Um, Detective Comics 378, a 5.0, signed by Joe Giza, right there. So, an old school Batman detective book, signed by Joe Gila. Um, stay. And speaking of Joe Gila, I was able to get one myself. Uh, this was probably signed at the same convention. Um... 429, 428 it was, so yeah, so E got his a day later, Erod got this one for me, this is Batman number um, 
164 from 1964. So it's an old, old book. Um, it's, a, it's a Silver Age, so very cool to have that. Graded in a 3.5, signed by Joe Gila. And I got two more. Two more. My Frank Cho book. This thing's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, came back at a 9.6. It's the Ultimates 3, Issue 3. It's the Scarlet Witch variant edition to this book. Nothing else significant, just except that the artwork is killer. And again, I used that paint pen, that Sharpie paint pen right here. I used the blue. It just pops. It came out beautiful. Look at it. It's great. And uh, my last book that I picked up of any, you know, real significance. You know, like obviously, I got weekly pulls and hauls and all that shit. But um, this one I bought off of um, Fistful of Comics, Francis McMinimum. You guys remember him? You know, he's out there. He does his thing. And uh, he was having a sale as well. So I reached out to him. And then... Again, a, a top 10 list book for me. Star Wars number one from 1977. Uh, it's a new stand edition, if that means anything. And it's signed by uh, the anchor Tom Palmer. So Howard Chaikin was the art. Tom Palmer was the inks. And Roy Thomas is the story. And this was done in 2016 at the Big Apple Con, which is kind of cool. So it's first appearance of Luke, first appearance of Princess Leia, first appearance of Darth Vader. And um, maybe it's the first appearance of Han on cover. First appearance of Obi-Wan on cover as well. Star Wars number one. And it came back, and it was like, it's an 8.5. It's a new stand, and it's signed by Tom Palmer right down here. So Roy Thomas would be the next guy that I would put on this thing. And... Um, a little skeptical about it because CBS, CBCS needs to get their shit together and uh, just get things out in a timely fashion. I love dealing with CBCS. I think they're great. And guys like you know, Mark Roman, which is no longer working for him, went on to his own thing. But this is really cool. Happy to have Star Wars. So that's it, guys. I mean, that's, that's, that's a lot. We're moving into 37 freaking minutes of your time of my 2018 year in review. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, check out, you know, again, this Saturday coming up. If you got any money left over from, you know, Christmas shopping and stuff, uh, check out the Great Legends auction with Edwin, Strictly Comics, with an X, and uh, see what you can do for that. Uh, until then, you know, hope you guys have a blessed Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Uh, <coughs> I'll periodically pop up, maybe if I can be a guest on... You know, Big East, NY Warriors, or the Great Legend, or you know anybody else just wants to shoot the shit. You know, I'll pop up up there, and uh, I'm gonna make a compile a 2019 want list. I know that ASM 12 is gonna be on there. It's gonna be the first book, and um, you know, because I only need like 70 something issues, and I'll have the entire run, like everything. Obviously, I need one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, but. To, to, to take a chunk out of those, those middle books. I, I have everything from 90, 98 all the way up. So to take a chunk in those lower books, those those mid-range things, that would be, that'd be amazing. So anyways, guys, took up too much of your time. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and uh, until next time, I will definitely talk to you later.